Yeah, very good. Well, you have to have it. I didn't think we... I thought we started it too slow in our pressing. Um, we gave them a comfort in the game, which in the first 10 minutes we don't really... Uh, we wouldn't really want any opponent to, to feel that. So our positioning wasn't quite right in our pressing. Uh, but then once we once we figured that out and, and got that bit higher up the pitch with um, with Rio pushing on and, and, and pressing, then of course we forced the longer balls. We could then pick up the the, the knockdowns and then we could then get our game moving. So, um, but yeah, but that side of it, you see the hunger in the team. You see how they're doubling up around opponents. I think you see Callum's goal. You see Dyson the the run that he's made and the hunger he has to get the ball. So. Uh, so yeah, it's something that's very much there within the team and has been from the first day of pre-season. Hello again and a warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. I've got John here to go over the Glasgow Derby on Sunday. What a brilliant performance by Celtic. Outstanding from start to finish. Finish Celtic 3, Rangers nothing. Total demolition derby. Brilliant game. Excellent to watch. Atmosphere was superb. Let's bring in John. How are you today, John? I absolutely fine, Xander. What a day, yeah. What an absolutely, absolutely brilliant day. Never in doubt, was it? Never in doubt, John. Uh, and not one, uh, not one of our new stars started the game either, John, apart from obviously Schmeichel, who signed a wee while ago. But no, John, uh, it was the original 11. You know, we'll, we'll go through the 1-11 to 11, uh, in a wee minute because we had our wee prediction on the, the preview, didn't we? So we started with Schmeichel and goal. Big Carter Vickers was OK, as we said, so no problem there. Scalesy, who I thought was outstanding, played at centre back beside Vickers. We had Greg Taylor and Alistair Johnson on left and right back. We had Callum in the anchor role. We had Rio and we had Bernardo, who I, I John I thought was brilliant as well. Bernardo, outstanding. Um, I think you said that, you got that right. He he started Maida, Kyogo, and Nicholas Kuhn. So John, I think you were bang on with your prediction. I I was nearly bang on with my score prediction as well, but I never could have... Like, but I, I couldn't really see Rangers scoring in that game. I didn't feel Celtic were under threat at any time in that game. I think that game could have been a, an absolute thumping for them. They get they get off light. I think 3-0 flat them. Yeah, John, the, the, every chance that Rangers did have in the game, they were very wasteful, weren't they? We're going to go through the, the full game in a wee minute. Um, but I thought Rangers were very wasteful with the, the few chances that they did have, and there wasn't too many. Obviously, they came out the traps the first 10 minutes and they looked, they looked OK the first 10 minutes, John. But as soon as we started putting a foot in the ball, that was it. It was uh, domination from the first 10 minutes to the very end. Aye, they looked OK for 10, 11 minutes or whatever it was. So I've been listening to a lot of Rangers podcasts. I don't normally listen to podcasts, but I was wanting to hear their take on it, see what they think here. Because of the big meltdown that's happening right now. Um even Clement says ah, we dominated for 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was, and their fans are saying, oh, we were brilliant for 15 minutes. And Celtic sucked him in and blew them out like bubbles under. Celt- that was part of the plan of the game for Celtic. Let them come at us, see how good they are, counter-attack them, and they fell right into the trap. It's nothing to do with Celtic, you know, getting outplayed for 15 minutes. That was part of the plan. And it failed. Miserably for them, and like yeah. I say, Celtics absolutely just invited them on and absolutely punished them. And that's what I seen in that game. Because when I was watching that, I'm thinking either high press and Celtic, but Celtic don't look like there's any threat to them here. They look like they're just taking it easy. And at any minute, I thought Celtic's going to just turn this attack of theirs and a go, and they did. Yeah. I expected yeah. it, and that's what happened. That's it, John. And uh, I said a minute ago, Rangers were wasteful with the few chances they had. But Celtic were extremely wasteful with the various chances that we had. And I've got everything wrote down here, John, to go through bit by bit, and we'll get your opinion on um, what happened in the game on Sunday. Uh, just a wee, a wee bit of housekeeping before we move on. If you can hit that notification bell, please hit the notification bell. Helps our channel out. You'll get a wee notification anytime there's a new podcast. Hit the like button as well, please. Help the channel and hit the subscribe button as well. That would be much appreciated. Appreciated, sorry. And a massive thank you to everybody that viewed the preview of the Glasgow Derby because that was our highest figures yet, John. 2.3 thousand views for the preview of the Glasgow Derby. So a big thank you to everybody that viewed and uh, listened. All right, big thanks as always. 
Uh, if you could come back and listen again, that would help. But aye, thanks to everybody, aye. And well done to the winner of the competition as well. Yeah, well done to Raymond. I was chatting to Raymond as well. He's he's over the moon with his prize, John. Uh, that was last week's winner, sorry, Raymond Steele. So uh, I've been chatting away to Raymond. So he, he's, he's got that hung up above his fireplace already. So uh, well done to Raymond. And uh, this week's winner was uh, Michael Chalmers. So congratulations to Michael as well. There'll be videos on Facebook, uh, the the live draw, and I'll put the live draw on this video as well for him to watch to see it. That was, John, nearly 400 entries into the competition. It's just grown and grown, this. Aye. Aye. So that's good. It's always good to see the the channel growing a wee bit. Subs are up, doing pretty well as, as well. So aye, aye. All good, Zander. And well done to uh, Michael as well. Yeah, congratulations, Michael. Um, and the real competition, just look out for the next reel. So hit that notification bell and that'll tell you when the next competition is up. Okay, John, let's move on. Let's get into the game. It was a, it was a brilliant game, right? We all know that. It was, it was, the atmosphere was superb as well, John. It's, it's just Celtic fans are amazing. Isn't it? We all know that anyway, Celtic fans, especially when it comes to the Glasgow Derby. You know, they're all on their feet. They're all singing and dancing. Uh, just backing the team to the hill. No Rangers fans there, obviously, at Celtic Park on Sunday. And, uh, John, I'm with you on this one. I'd rather it stays like that. No Rangers fans at Celtic Park. No Celtic fans at Ibrox. Are you still feeling the same way? Absolutely. I'm still feeling the same way. I've said it for months and months. I don't want them in Celtic Park. It's as simple as that. I don't care if it creates what, you know, so-called, uh, what do you call them? Neutrals call... A great atmosphere and all that. Couldn't they care less? There's a great atmosphere without them, Xander. And it's the same at Ibrox. They create an atmosphere for their players as well. But me personally, I'm happy just to have no fans at each ground. That atmosphere isn't any worse with just Celtic fans. If anything, it's better. Yeah, John, we take that team into Ibrox, the one that played on Sunday there. There's no, there's no problem, is there? So, um, and that's without any of our new stars starting the game. So, yeah, John, things are looking really good just now. Really, really bright for Celtic just now. Um, so, OK, into the game then. Four minutes gone. We did mention at the start, Rangers had a wee five, ten minute spell at the start. But Celtic, they had the first shot and goal. It was fourth minute. A real shot wide. About 30 yards out. Uh, Rio Hatate showing some early intent. 30 yards out, John. Uh, maybe a couple of yards past. Aye, that was the first real effort for Celtic. Um, aye, I, I don't I didn't think Hattati performed uh, very well at all on Sunday, to be honest with you, but aye, he kind of set the standard. Have pot shots for you outside the box, you never know your luck. Yeah, yeah, that's it, John. It was a good effort, you know. <laughs> you know, I mean, these chances that we're going to go through in a wee minute, John, it's, I mean, even, even a couple for Rangers as well, there's a lot of wasteful efforts. Six minute Dessers, John. There's no denier him, and he scaffolds his shot right, right into the keeper's arms, John. That was a bit of a sitter for Dessers in the six minute. That was one of their best chances in the game. Um, but I think the replay showed he was offside anyway. So I don't think possibly. I don't think that was accounted. But you don't know with Dallas on the VAR. We're going to get to him as well, John. That offside goal that we got, you know, offside, not offside to me. But uh, a bit of a sitter for Dessers there, John, in the six minute. Aye, aye, it was. Aye, I thought he was going to do better with that, but uh, aye, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, seventh minute, a minute later, we've got a cut back for Greg Taylor, and there's no one in the box, so at this point I'm screaming at the TV because there's uh, it's a beautiful ball for Greg Taylor, a lovely cut back, and, uh, you know, there's no Kyogo, there's no uh, midfielders in the box, no one there to tap it in, it was just a lovely cut back as well. Uh, a wee bit wasteful in the seventh minute, John, but things improve very quickly, John, but this the particular chance, and this be cut back and no one in the box. Aye. Now, I don't think Celtic were really that wasteful, but there was a few chances where I was thinking, play this guy in, play that guy in. There was a lot of times I was seeing players making runs and they were only getting uh, picked out. So I was kind of angry at that with some, uh, some, just some points, you know, but I, there was a few uh, things like that, like that cross Greg Taylor put in. I very wasteful. Um, just a few occasions, but overall delighted with how uh, every player performed, to be honest with you. 
Yeah, the players, man for man, were outstanding, John. Um, but moving on in the game, 10th minute, Maton Nera, Nera, chance miss for Rangers, John. This was their first 10 minutes that they're all screaming about. The 10th minute, Matondo header, wide. Uh, another chance that should have been buried, if you're going to be perfectly honest, if they were half-decent players, John, they would have buried these chances. But Matondo header is wide. And looking at the replay on that one as well, that looked offside to me as well. So that possibly wouldn't have stood either. Doesn't matter, it never went in anyway, so uh, aye, aye. again, who cares? Let's move on to the Celtic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay, let's move on then, John, as you say. We finally get the goal that we were looking for. We're all celebrating, we're all going nuts, but I wasn't, John, because I was wanting to see the replay to see if it was offside. And sure enough, Dallas and the VAR gives it as offside. It's a cool goal. Uh, finish from a Kuhn cross, lovely bit of football, John. Lovely, some lovely interplay, and, and a nice cross from Nicholas straight to Kyogo, puts it into the net, John. Um, everybody's going off their heads, really, aren't they? But we are decided to chop this one off. This one is very close, isn't it? Very close, I That's the first thing I texted you after the game. That was now offside. Now, we've seen, I've only seen one. Uh, replay or capture if you like in the moment it was supposed to be offside and he's at the very least that's online now we're seeing that for an angle that's looking like you know from the goal side looking at towards the offside position mm-hmm. so maybe that's thrown as a wee bit maybe if we've seen a better angle but for the angle I've seen it looked to be online to me and, and I've tried to measure it with a ruler and everything myself uh, and it definitely looked onside to me. When I initially seen it, I thought Kuhn's offside, you know, when in real time, I mean. Mm-hmm. When that pass got put through, uh, I think I thought right away, Kuhn's offside. And when the Celtic fans were all celebrating, I'm saying to myself, this is going to be offside because Kuhn looked offside. But then when I seen the still, obviously there's a Rangers player in the middle playing him onside, or what appears to be onside. But look, it, it was chopped off, there's nothing we can do about it. We, we haven't got proof. We've only got one picture to look at. And judging by that, they're trying to say it's offside, but I've had a rule of it and I've checked it with my own markings and it looks online to me. If, it, if he's offside, he must have had his lace loosened or something like that. I don't know what it was, but no, it certainly didn't look offside to me. I think that was a perfectly good goal denied. As do I, John. And uh, Brendan agrees with you as well. You know, he's, he's already said that he, that he thinks... T- the goal should have stood and he was on side. So even the managers saying that, John. But, you know, nothing we can do about it. We all we said on the, the preview, John, the other day, Dallas, we had to keep our eye on Dallas on the VAR. And right away, John, there it is, an offside, a good goal given it as offside. So we move on. And we finally get that goal, John, didn't we? We didn't have long to wait, 17th minute. It's, a, it's some nice play again, John. Alistair Johnson, I thought, was outstanding in the game as well. Some some of the crosses he put into that box were just amazing. Um, but this one finds his man, John Maeda, eight yards out, and knocks it home, beautiful finish and a lovely cross from Alistair Johnson. So the fans didn't have long to wait, did they? one nothing Celtic after 17 minutes. Aye, aye. Three dies in. Uh, got a wee pocket rocket, isn't he? I think one of the Rangers defenders slips just before the cross comes in. So that kind of helped Celtic a wee bit there, but I think it was that guy, Proper. Uh, <laughs> proper, what a name. Uh, he slips, and that allows the cross to get in. So, uh, aye, who cares? Dyson's in the right place at the right time to smash it into the net. Um, aye, ecstatic at that point, Sander. I'm shouting at the telly, what is that one offside as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no way they're going to call that offside, were they? Because it's on the byline, they cuts it back. You know, I was sort of thinking that myself, John. You know, cutting that one off, there's no way you're cutting that off for offside. So uh, I think we were all thinking the same thing. But probably 17th minute, John. We're all we're all dancing, we're all singing. It's it's just amazing. And a nice wee tidy finish for Mider as well, I might add, John. He's, he's, he's just uh, one of our best players just now, dies in Mider. Definitely, I. Like we, we all know he's not the best in the final third. You know, his crosses uh, leave a lot to be desired, if you like. But what we love about Maeda 
as he's closing down abilities. He's chasing back, he's tackling. That side of his game is top notch. And uh look if if he ever when he ever leaves Celtic, we're gonna miss him a lot. I, I love Dyson Maida. What he's right up there with uh, the most important players at Celtic. But it's just a pity, wasn't he? Blindingly brilliant in the final third that putting the crosses and that in, because what a player that would be, Xander. You're talking forty, fifty million pounds for a player like that. If he had a, a good end product in the final third, you know. But he has got a good end product in a sense. He scores a lot of goals for Celtic and he creates havoc for defenders. That's where his strength is. Uh, I, you know, I love Dyson Maida, as do all Celtic fans. Outstanding talent. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's also improved slightly this season. I know it's only four or five games in, John, but he's he scored three or four goals already, Dyson, hasn't he? So, yeah, I know he had that wee stint up front against Hibernian couple of weeks ago and bagged a couple so but on the wine joint he's still banging in the goals as you say it's just brilliant to have Dyes and Maida in the team it's absolutely brilliant as soon as you see Maida and the, the team line up you know there's a great chance we're winning the game so um, and he's chasing back John as well I mean against Rangers on Sunday against Rangers there it's I mean even Kyogo was doing it as well wasn't he I mean your centre forwards a striker chasing back to our own 18 yard box to put in tackles it's I just think Brendan's got the full squad playing the way that he wants them to play, John. I defend from the front. That's the Celtic way just now. Um, you, know, you noticed at the start of that game, Celtic were only high-pressing Rangers like they normally do. They were, they were letting them have the ball, basically. Letting them play about and sucker punch them. And that's what happened. Celtic were allowing them to have the ball in the defensive half of the field. Let them pass it about. Give them a wee bit of space. And once they try and get forward... Will sucker punch them. But uh, if Celtic wanted to press them at the start of the game, they would never have had 10, 15 minutes of half decent spell, you know. But Celtic decided not to press them. Celtic decided just to let them have it, I think. Yeah, they let them have it, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Either in that sense, I know. Eh? Uh, John, they had their 10 minutes, but they did nothing else in the game. That was their two chances. Matondo and Dessers, sitters, you know, there was sitters. If they were half decent players, they were that that ball would have been in the net a couple of times. Anyway, John, let's move on. Jeff T gets a yellow card. Right, John, looking at the replay on this yellow card from for Jeff T, the Rangers player, he's raised his hand. Now, in my book, if you raise your hand and you strike a, an opposite player's face with your hand, it's an automatic red card. So if they change the rule on that as well, do you think? I don't remember the incident. Uh, there's a few incidents I don't remember. I knew you were going to bring stuff like this up and I haven't actually watched the game back. I've watched the highlights, but they don't include things like that. But one tackle that did stand out early on was that wee guy, Connor Barron's tackle on. Was it Hitati, was it? V- very dangerous tackle. Gone to the ground, sliding in, taking his legs away and he never got a yellow card for that, which I was stunned at. But I don't remember the one with Jeff G, Jeff G or whatever his name is. Yeah, Chief I don't know the guy is it Jeff T I think it's Jeff T I'm not sure John but he got a yellow card anyway so the incident was saw right so on the replay it shows you you know the Celtic fans the ball's away right but the Celtic fans are going off their head this boy has basically raised his hand and smacked uh, the Celtic player on the face and uh, he's given a yellow for it that's it going to VAR John so you must be allowed to raise your hand now and uh, get away with it with just a yellow card so that must be the new uh, rule Let's move on, John, because there's nothing we can do about it. The yellow was given. Is that, is that a wee bit of sarcasm, Alexander? <laughs> eh? <laughs> I've got to be sarcastic, especially when it comes to decisions like that, John. It's unreal. You know, if that's going to VAR and it's a Celtic player hitting Jeffy, it's a different story. Believe you me, John. Believe you me. Um, Johnston Yellow, 20th minute, John. Um, that's a foul on Diamondi. Diamond. I still don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Diamond. Well, they, they call him... Diamonde. Diamonde, right, okay. Diamond, Diamonde, D- Diamond, whatever his name is, John. It's a yellow card for Johnston anyway. It's a it's a coming together. It's a there's no hands raised, anything like that, like the foul just before, a minute before, um, John. But I think if the referee's just trying to level up the the yellow cards there. So Johnston gets the yellow card flash, and I think Diamond gets a yellow as well. But uh John, for me, the referee should, should have just left both players to it and walked away and, 
not booked. Either of the players just left it as it is, but he booked both players. That's Johnston on a yellow as to watch what he's doing for the rest of the game. Aye, uh, Rangers players had to watch what he was doing as well. <laughs> yeah, John, that's it. Yeah. Not that we're doing, not that any of the Rangers players were doing much at this point, John. Celtic are playing about with them, and they, you know, having a bit of fun, passing it about. You know, Rangers, Rangers were nowhere after the 10th minute, John. They were absolutely nowhere to be seen. Hiding, scared, you name it, John. That was, uh, it was just lovely to watch, wasn't it? It was, um, uh, when was the last time you saw a dominant performance like that? I know the score was only 3 0. But the performance, the the efforts, the display. When was the last time you saw a display like that against Rangers? Last time I can remember was a six-two game. I, I didn't think Celtic came out of second gears under. I thought That's Celtic it. just they That's walked it, about. John. Yeah, they just walked about like it was nothing, and played them off the park. And it's all very well beating Diddy teams like Ross County six six nil. I mean, you're coming to Celtic Park, you're playing the mugs here. You know, you've got yeah. You know, set your standards. Uh, if Ross County is your standard, then you have no chance of winning a league. And they were getting on about that as if it was something. We are ready for you. We're ready for you. Did you see us against Ross County? Well, I didn't see them against Ross County, but I heard the phone, the phone ins and all that. And uh, if that's the way they played against Ross County, I can only say Ross County must be a really, really bad team. Yeah, that's it, John. It's, uh, they were going on a wee bit about the 6 nothing. Went they? Even the, the Sky commentators mentioned it a few times when, when I watched the, the the rerun, John. That was, they were going on about, you know, 6 nothing against Ross County a few times. So, yeah, they're obviously, they were taking that result into the game on Sunday against Celtic. And it's, you know, I don't know where their mindset is. I don't really care where their mindset is, John. But um, Rangers as a club are in some mess. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that Rangers, you know, uh, I think there's big trouble over there at Rangers, John. But um, we're not here to talk about them. Well, we're here to talk about them, but we're here to talk about Celtic beating Rangers, John. That's what we're here to talk about. Um, but I think there's a bit of trouble over there. Um, we'll get to that a wee bit later on. Let's move on with the game. This Hatati chance, John. Everybody had their hands in their head or their head in their hands. It was a beautiful ball play through to, to, to Hitati on the angle, John. All you had to do was curl it around the keeper into the net, nobody near him, and it was just wide. Went to a slight angle, possibly went against him, possibly, John, but everybody was waiting in that net. Bulging, great chance, John. Still one nothing to Celtic. Aye. I think I was sitting with my head in my hands for about 10 minutes after that. Speechless. How did they miss that? But like you say, it was a tight angle as well, so you've, you've got to take that into consideration. But a guy of his ability, he's a top, top quality player. He's got to be putting that in the net, hasn't he? Yeah, I was thinking that net's going to be bulging, as was every Celtic fan. That's a bad miss, but it didn't affect us. We, we, we ploughed on and uh, continued to dominate. That's it, John. Uh, domination from the 10th minute onwards, wasn't it? But... Uh... As I say, I was waiting in the net bulging at that point. I was up my feet, John. I was up my feet. I thought that was it. Game over. The 37th minute. But we didn't have long to wait for the second goal, John. Uh, because uh, just before the goal, Sterling got a yellow card, didn't he, for a foul on Kyogo. I think the Rangers players, I think there's quite a few yellow cards for the Rangers players, John. They're trying to put their weight about, about a wee bit. Aye, aye. They did have a few yellows. Uh, so did Celtic. But... I I did a few yellow cards. I can't remember the, the tackle that Dessers put in, but I I can't remember it, so I can't comment on it. Aye. No, that was Sterling, John. I fell by Sterling on Kyogo. Uh, but he got his yellow card anyway, John, so that's at least the referee's, you know, he's keeping the yellow cards coming out, John, for these heavier tackles. So that's what we want to see. I think he's a, he's, by the way, I think he's a half decent player, Sterling, Sander. I think if you, if you were to, Ask me what one of their players I would have in the Celtic team. No, they would get a game every week, but to sit on the bench and come on, I think he'd be the player I would take with Bastelin. I think he's a half decent player. Yeah, he's a uh, yes, decent, John. There is one or two that are decent in the Rangers team, but as you say, nothing that would get into the, the Celtic team. Um, but yeah, John, it's uh, it was a heavy tackle on Kyogo, so uh, but the wee man just gets up, didn't he, and gets on with it. Kyogo is uh. 
He's built with sturdy stuff, Kyogo. I know he looks quite flimsy, John, but he's a strong wheel laddie, John. He's a he's a strong uh, striker for Celtic. Uh, anytime he gets fouled, he just gets up and gets on with it. Clyde built. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Clyde Bilt, John, and speaking of Kyogo, yeah, there it is, John. What a finish for Kyogo. The 40th minute puts us 2 nothing up. What a goal from Kyogo for the hash, eh, John. 30 yards out at least, is it? Maybe even further out, John, I'm not sure. Uh, nice wheelie off of Taylor into space for Kyogo, and he rattles it, John, for about 30 yards out. Goalkeeper's got absolutely no chance for this one. The scalper does it again, John. Kyogo, 2 nothing Celtic. Canter case at this point. I measured it to be 26 yards. Between 26 and 27 yards, if you count the boxes, each, each box is uh, six, 6 yards. Um, so it looked about 26 yards out, 27 yards out. I don't care how far it, out it was. What a finish that was. He's passed that into the net. And I'll tell you something as well. Listen to uh, BBC and all that, and uh, Radio Clyde going on about, oh, the keeper was terrible, you know, all these ex-Rangers pundits mm -hmm. going on about, oh, the keeper was terrible, terrible position. That keeper didn't know what was happening there. It's not to do with the keeper being terrible. It's Kyogo surprised him with it. The keeper moved. When Kyogo, can I say it? When Kyogo moved across the box with the ball, the keeper's moving along with him. I don't think he was expecting him to hit it. And they get absolutely nowhere near it. A pass into the net for nearly 30 yards out, Xander. Nearly 30 yards out. And he passed that right into the corner of the net. And Butlin's supposed to be a world-class keeper. He looked like a bit of an idiot there, to be honest with you. Yeah, John, you can understand why. Yeah, I don't rate, by the way, just before I move on, I don't rate Butlin at all. I never have done all People were saying he's a decent keeper, blah, blah, blah. No, don't rate him. And he's... Uh, and every time I see this guy, Butland, I hope he stays at Rangers for a long, long time, to be honest with you, John. Um, but no, Kyogo, you can understand why he was linked to Man City with uh, strikes like that. What a finish, John. Um, there was no way he was going to Man City Celtic players, John. He'll see his career at Celtic, I think. I think so, I. He's nearly 30 now, Kyogo, isn't he? Um, he might even be 30, I'm not sure, but... Uh, he's a top, top quality player. He's a big game player, put it that way, Kyogo. He's a big game player. All these derby games, he always shows up. That's him scored, what was it, eight, I think, in the derby matches. He's got a 50% return rate in the derby matches, which is pretty good for a derby match striker, you know. Um, he's a scalper. He's, he's just a scalper. He's up there with uh, Larson and all that for banging in the goals against him and I think by the time he finishes his career at Celtic I think he'll be up there with the, the top goal scorers against uh, Rangers you know but okay. aye what a finish nearly 30 yards out just passes it into the net and Butland I think he had a good start to a, a good season last last season as a serial loser but I think the Rangers fans and the, the Rangers media press guys they all rated him, he's world class and all that, what a keeper he is. But that's when he first signed. But I think he's just, I'm a, I agree with you, I don't think there's any great keeper in there either, Zander. I think he's a one-season wonder. Yeah. Yep. If you want to call a serial loser a wonder, but you know what I mean? No, they're in crisis, John. They're in crisis. Don't care what MD says. Um, but anyway, let's finish off the first half, John. Um, but this point, uh, I couldn't keep the smile off my face, 2 nothing up. And not only the fact that we're 2 nothing up, John, it's the, it's the control we had in the game. Totally dominant, total control of the match as well. Rangers didn't have a look in at all. Um, and it looked as though, as you said a couple of minutes, John, second gear, if we wanted to score, we could have scored. Well, I think so, I eh? Like I say, Celtic just sat back and let them play a bit. Um... I, th I think Celtic were very, very clever yesterday, the way they set up. They were looking to counter-attack them early. And that's why it looked like Rangers had a lot of pressure at the start. Celtic were allowing it. Celtic could have high-pressed them for the off and no give them an inch. But that wasn't part of the plan. The plan was to sit in and sucker-punch them. And it happened. 
three times in the first half. Obviously, one of the goals was offside, but Celtic's plan and Brendan's plan was absolutely flawless. That's my opinion. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It was just a great day, beautiful Sunday, wasn't it? Um, right, let's round this off then, John. For the third minute, we've got another cross for Alistair Johnson. I mean, these balls he was whizzing across the, the box were just amazing. And what a clearance for this big shooter, ex Hearts player shooter. Uh, the ball's just about to go to Kyogo for another goal, a tap in for Kyogo. But somehow Shooter gets his body in the road, John. And it's a decent clearance, if you're going to be honest. But uh, where, where were Alistair Johnson's crossing at the box on Sunday, John? He was outstanding, aye. aye good clearance by Big Shooter there. But I had a lot more work to do after that. Um, their defence had a, a real, their defence had a really busy day. But I asked that Johnson was outstanding yesterday. We'll get to the marking soon. There's a couple of uh, high scorers there, I think. Yeah, definitely. And let's round it off then. As I say, the last bit of action in the first half is Bernardo wins it. Takes it around about six Rangers players. <laughs> I was screaming for him to release the shot. And eventually he releases the shot, John. It's tame, very tame, right at the goalkeeper. Um, but he should have hit his shot earlier, John. Takes it around about five, maybe six Rangers players. Gets his shot off eventually. But at that point, it's uh, I think he's knackered. The, the shot is very, very weak. Um, but, yeah, Bernardo thought he had a decent game, John. And we'll get to the score, as you say, individual scores. Um, but that should have been 3 nothing. Aye. I think he'd a wee bit of the Nicholas Kuhn syndrome going on there. Um but try to take it around the whole team. But aye, outstanding performance again. <laughs> Another outstanding performer yesterday, Bernardo. Yeah, he, he done well. You know, coming in, you know, in the absence of Matt O'Reilly, and uh, and and he played brilliant. He never put a, he never put a fit wrong apart from maybe that shot. To be honest with you. Um, all right, John. Um, speaking of Bernardo, let's kick. Let's get into the second half. But speaking of Bernardo, John, the, the one thing he did do wrong was early in the second half, 47th minute, he sort of dilly-dallied in the ball in our half, if you remember. And uh, it's Big Dessers takes the ball off him, runs through and goal, and it's another bad miss for Dessers, isn't it? Um, a decent striker would have buried it, John. As I keep saying, Dessers isn't a decent striker. Um, and luckily for us, he's not a decent striker because that would have been 2-1. That was a bit of a sitter. Bernardo very sloppy early in the second half. Aye, that was his one mistake that he had, Bernardo. But other than that, he had a great game. But aye, yeah. Dessers is very poor, I think. I, don't, I just don't think. I'm not a Rangers fan, obviously, but if I was, I think I'd be uh, looking for a better attacker at my club, you know, because I think he's quite poor. Come back. Pastor seen by. Morelos, all is forgiven, eh? Morph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, John, this is the one that I was, you know, I was really, really upset about because it's a weak yoga. He's throwing the keeper, isn't he? He's right through. All he has to do is put it by him, you know, a, a player of Kyogo's ability. He just had too much time, I think, John, um, right through in the goalkeeper, and he sort of chips it wide. I don't know, it was a weird one, wasn't it? Um, uh, it should have been 3 nothing at this point, John. 15th minute, uh, we could all go, but he's allowed to miss a chance now and again, John, but just a wee bit wasteful there, possibly. Aye, but it's one of these situations that the next goal is crucial, isn't it? If Rangers score, there's a chance they could easily, you know, get a bit of confidence for that. Yeah. And, and Kyle goes right through in the keeper. I'm expecting him to smash it right across the keeper. That's what I was expecting. Because I'm thinking, this is in, right across the keeper, had my arms out, ready to celebrate. And he chips it by the post. Yeah, oh, try to showboat, John. Showboat, possibly. Possibly a wee bit of sh- try to showboat there, aye. But uh, it's a bad miss, to be honest. But it's a really, really bad miss. It goes for me. It goes into the category sitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there was another wee through ball from Hatati as well, wasn't it? Uh, right through to Kyogo, one and one on the keeper. Yeah, three. I think should have been there. Uh, let's not beat about the bush, John. That was a bad miss. Um, but we're going to allow a wee superstar a wee badness from now and again, especially when you're already 2 nothing up against the Rangers. So, um, substitution time, John. This is 60-odd uh, minutes, 62 minutes. We've got a new boy, Engels, comes on. Bernardo goes off. 
Uh, good to see the new boy coming on there, John Engels. Uh, never had much time to do much in the game, but what he did do was tidy enough, I suppose. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember him doing anything special, but uh, I it's, I can't really remember. I, I remember trying to work out where is he on the park because a lot of people had uh, uh, kind of similar coloured boots on, so it was kind of hard to work out who was who. Um, same when we used to have, uh, who was it, Matt O'Reilly and Bernardo in the centre of the park. I kind of found it hard to see who was who. Mm-hmm. I had that problem with Engels yesterday as well. No. No, no, it's, uh, as you say, no, he never done much, but he never had time to do much, so that's just a wee bedding in 20 minutes for a minute, I suppose. Um, and there was other substitutes as well, but before they substitutes, John, I noticed that the referee beating Celtic, never gave Celtic advantage at least three times, pulled the, pay, the play back three times, and Celtic were on the attack. Good attacks as well, you know, through three against two, etc., John, but beating pulled it back at least three times, I can remember. I remember two times when they pulled it back, and I remember once when Celtic took the frick, the frick, <laughs> a quick free kick. Uh, no law against that, the quick free kick, and he's blew it back. The Celtic fans are raging with him yesterday, beaten, had an absolute shocker. And as you says, a couple of times, there might have been three times where they could have let play continue, and he's pulled it back. The guy's just an absolute joke, and he's still refereeing derby matches. I don't know why. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we hadn't heard from beating all season for the start of the season. And as we said last week, John, before the referee was even announced, it's going to be beaten. And how right were we? It was beaten, John. Uh, but the extra bonus was Dallas on the VAR, wasn't it? So um, two bonuses for the Celtic supporters there, beating the ref um, and Dallas on the VAR. Uh, this boy, McCausland, John, that came on, that was another miss for them in the 64th minute. Because of very, very weak effort, John. If they had uh, semi half decent players on that park on Sunday, it might have been a slightly closer game with the sitters that they missed. Aye, possibly, but we don't know. But um, like I say, Celtic never came out of second gear. Celtic looked like if they wanted to score in that game, they could have. They played about as if it was a friendly. That's, that's the type of game I've seen, and it looked like a friendly. With a couple of maybe a couple of uh, colourful tackles, but it was uh, it's just one of the games. It just flew past without me being overly concerned at any point. No total domination, as I said earlier, John. But there was two or three chances that they did have. You know, there was um, maybe sloppiness on our behalf, especially the Bernardo one, where he just trips over the ball when Dessa runs through. <laughs> it's, it's just mistakes, isn't it? So we need to brush up on that. I think. But maybe I'm being a wee bit too picky. Uh, Kuhn gets a yellow, John. Slight tug on a Rangers player. Nothing really to report there. Um, so another yellow card handed out there. And then we get a third goal, John. Icing on the cake time. 75th minute. This one is about 30 yards out for Callum. <laughs> and what a finish, John. What a finish. Maybe it's 28 yards. I don't know. Um, but that did take a slight nick, John. I'm not too sure. But what a finish either way. Right into the top left-hand side of the net, John. Keeper again, absolutely no chance. Two world-class goals there on Sunday against Rangers, John. And uh, for me, the McGregor one was the pick of the bunch. What a finish. Aye, uh, that was the pick of the bunch. And they deserved that outstanding performer again, Callum McGregor. Uh, aye, that was about, I'd say that was about 28 yards, that one. <laughs> it's about the same distance as the Kilgo one, apart from uh, Callum was on the angle. So, you can and he's blasted right in the, the roof of the net so uh, I think it took a very very slight nick and he, even if it never took a nick that was net bound all days under that was world class from Callum McGregor that's three times this season he scored goals like that Um, I, I did say before the season started if Matt O'Reilly goes Cal Mack needs to step up with a few goals and he's certainly doing that that was outstanding out of this world. So far for me, Celtic goal of the season. A moment and an absolute magic, Sander. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful it was, John. Uh, but that's your captain for you, isn't it? You know, that's what he's capable of, as you said last week as well. And as you say as well, John, he has to step up. He, he always does step up, but 
he doesn't really have the pot shots, does he? But he started doing it again um, since uh, Matt O'Reilly has left. So keep it up, Callum. Keep these pot shots up because you've got the ability, son, and you always seem to find the net as well. So um, makes you wonder why these teams gave Callum so much space outside the box, didn't it? Uh, it does. I, I was thinking about Callum McGregor the day uh, when I was watching the highlights. I was thinking, if Celtic were to buy him, for, let's say an English Premiership team or something, how much would he cost to buy a player like that that controls games and can score goals like that? How much would he cost? Yeah, I mean, it's a funny one because you're going to Callum McGregor at the age he is just now, I think you'd be paying about 20 million, but a 25 year old Callum, John, 45 million. Easily. He's, he's out of this world, Callum McGregor. The way he controls these games. He never seems phased by anything and manages to uh, step up with world class goals like that. I mean, that's he scored three goals this season in four, four or five games, counting the cup game. And they've all been screamers for outside the box. He's, yeah. he's outstanding and he's got that in his locker. That's why I like Callum McGregor playing further up the field. I know he wasn't playing further up the field yesterday. But, but if you looked at his map, Everywhere he touched the ball yesterday, he was all over that park, Sander. Every area of that pitch he covered, he's just, even at 31 years old, it's not that old, still got a few years left in him yet. But the guy was outstanding. And I think, like you say, if he was maybe 25, 27 years old, you're talking 45 million for a player like that, 50 million. He's incredible. Yeah, we're lucky to have him, John. We really are. Uh, captain for a reason, isn't he? Uh, substitutes time then. Kyogo off for either. Hitate off for McCowan. Good to see McCowan getting his run out as well, John. Young laddie from Dundee signed for a million pound. We didn't even touch on that, John. They, we did get eventually get these players over the line, didn't we? Uh, the ones we spoke about on the the preview. Um, then Kuden came off for Jamesy Forrest as well. So, uh, plenty of subs there, John, and it's good to get a see a couple of the new boys on the park, McCowan and uh, the £11 million boy, Engels, got a run out, run out as well, didn't he? So, good to see you, John. Uh, moving on, John, Tavernier volley, 78th minute, half volley, sorry. Uh, great save for Casper, John. Uh, we spoke about Casper Spiegel's concentra- concentration level on the, the preview the other day, John. And you said, don't worry about Casper when he's called into action, he'll be there. And boy, was he there, John, for this. What a save for Casper from a Tavernier volley inside the box. 78th minute. Great save. Fantastic save. I was hoping that was going in so I could get my score predictor right. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, a lot of people said 3-1, John, but a lot of people said 3-0. That's why there was over 30 entries. 32, I think it was 31. I can't remember. Correct entries, John, out of the 400. So there's 32 people got that score correct. Um, but back to the game, John. What a goalkeeper we've got there, John Casper Smeichel. Outstanding. Um, value for money as well, I might add, John, um, because all we're doing is paying that boy's wages. Aye. I don't know how much wages Casper's on. I'd imagine it's a healthy wage, but I thought if, uh, what a save. 37 years old, still got it. His distribution again was absolutely incredible. Aye, aye, just world-class, a world-class player, world-class keeper. Certainly better than the keeper Rangers I've got, I'll tell you that for nothing. Um, aye, he's, he's there to make the saves, his concentration levels, he had to uh, spend the whole match really doing nothing again. Apart from when Celtic are passing it about the back, of course, he's got to take the passes and, and play them back out again. Aye, and top performer. I thought he was outstanding yesterday, he had to make a couple of saves. I think he made three saves all in. One was right at him, and he made a couple of good good saves as well. Yeah, Johnny was there when he was needed. So that's all we can ask, isn't it? Uh, I just love having him at the the club, John. You know, Big Joe last season, the year before, was uh, instrumental for us. But this get this guy is going to do things for us this season, John. You you wait and see. I think he's going to perform in the Champions League as well. This guy because um, his concentration level, John, is there and it's there permanently, and that's what you need in the Champions League as well. Um, Let's move on, John, because this annoyed me, this, right? This, these two decisions I'm going to talk about. Taylor gets a yellow card in the 89th minute, John, for a push on McCausland, right? 
Yellow card, slight push. F fair enough, but it was very soft. But you got the yellow card and move on. Less than a minute later, John. That's, <laughs> I think it's Dessel's pushes Alistair Johnston, John. The exact same foul. Exactly the same. Less than a minute later and there's no yellow card. That is the kind of thing that really frustrates me. Aye. It's, uh, it's one way when it comes to these referees at Celtic Park against Rangers. It's, it's one way traffic. They're always going to try and do stuff like that. Basically. Booking Celtic players and no booking Rangers players for exactly the same thing. That look, that kind of thing's been going on for years, so it should never surprise anybody that that happens. It's to be expected. You know that's going to happen. There's a different set of rules for Celtic players. I don't care if anybody calls us paranoid. I don't really care. I can see it with my own eyes, as can you and as can every Celtic fan. There's a different set of rules when it comes to Celtic. It's exactly the same tackles, go punished for Celtic and they go unpunished for Rangers it's always been like that so it's no surprise mm. yeah that's it John. it's very very frustrating isn't it when you actually see it you know within 50 seconds of each foul I might add John that's that's what's annoying about it so it's fresh in the referee's mind um, alright anyway we'll move on another yellow card and it's new boy angle it's just a tangle just a tangle of legs another yellow card flashed Totally uncalled for, no need for a yellow card there, especially with a minute to go, John. It's, the game's finished. Uh, but beating and his wisdom flashes yet another yellow card. I didn't, I didn't see a Celtic player uh, going in hard once in the entire game, did you, John? No, Celtic are a clean team. They don't play, do they? Uh, and the worst tackle of the game went unpunished, Connor Barron, very early on in the game. I think it was a tatty tackled. Uh, a really dirty tackle, you know? Yeah, that's right. But it went unpunished, and then a few seconds later, a Celtic player gets booked for absolutely nothing. Um, aye, that was a bad tackle. Uh, Connor Barron was the guy they were all shouting about, oh, he's brilliant, oh, he's going to do this to Callum McGregor and do that. Uh, all I can say is, if Connor, Bar if Connor Barron is the answer, what is the question? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know, John, but the answer to me is average. The boy's very average player, Conor Barron. Um, I don't know what the question is, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> all right, John, let's round it up. Yeah, I'll tell you what the, uh, the question is. Who's got the baggiest eyes in Scottish football? <laughs> I think there's only one winner there, John, isn't there? We'll give that trophy to Conor Barron, I think. <laughs> um, uh, let's round it up, John. Michael save McCausland again. That's we guys just he's, he's got a wee bit of talent about him, but he's very weak. Just a young lad, I suppose. Uh, decent save for Michael, 93rd minute. That's it, John. Game's over. Uh, never really any trouble. A save or two, as you say, for Casper Michael, but apart from that, it's a walk in the park, this isn't it? 3 0 three to Celtic. Very comfortable, very, very easy. Too easy. No challenge. Celtic allowed him to come on to them the first 10 15 minutes, having a laugh, playing a bit like a cat playing with a mouse. Well, let's see what you can do, then we'll step it up. Uh, but I never felt under pressure. I felt that whole game very relaxed, and I've not felt like that in a derby game for a long time. I was saying that before in the preview. I'm never comfortable with these games, and I wasn't up until kickoff. Especially 10 minutes in, I'm thinking, what well, Celtic's playing about with them here. But they could sneak something. And then, obviously, Celtic just, you know, played them at their own game, basically, and wiped the floor with them. It was 3 0 going on 10 0s under. It could have been then Celtic wanted it. Yeah, John, I totally agree with you. Sorry about that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, you think about it. If we put these day chances away, John, it could easily have been 4, 5, 6, nothing. And that's with, without being um, over the top. It could have easily been four, five, six, nothing to Celtic on Sunday there. But, you know, we take the three, nothing. We didn't come out of second gear, as you say, John. That's, um, it was just beautiful to watch. Total domination. And what do you think is now being five points clear of Rangers at the top of the league at this early stage? Uh, all eyes on Aberdeen. Yeah, well, John, that's another thing into Aberdeen and Dundee United for that matter, John. Um, I think 
you know, I think one of the commenters said that the new rivals corner should be about Aberdeen now. So, <laughs> you know, all joking aside, John, Aberdeen are doing really well, aren't they? So they are uh, joint top with us. Obviously, we've scored more goals for them, top and goal difference. But Rangers now have to catch not only Celtic, but Aberdeen and Dundee United as well. Aye. Uh, well, I think they will catch them. I don't think uh, Rangers will finish third or anything like that. I think they'll finish second. Uh, look, it's early days in the season. They could win the league. All right, that's a bit of a kind of joke statement. But you, look, you never know. They could come strong. We don't know. It's early in the season. We're only four games into the league. Celtic sitting uh, five points ahead of them. But I just can't kind of see any team beating Celtic this season uh, in the league, Xander. I, I just can't kind of see it. I think Celtic are flying. I think this is obviously it's Brendan's second season in charge. And this is where you're going to see Celtic stronger than last season. This team are flying right now. And they're playing better football than what they did under uh, Postacoglu, I think. Yeah, well, John, that's a good question, actually. No, good, no question. Comment, sorry. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Is Brendan playing better football uh, than uh, Postacoglu did? Because I agree with John. I think we're playing far, much better football than under Postacoglu. It's very, very crisp and sharp and just uh, flawless, really. It's very flawless, apart from maybe being a wee bit wasteful now and again. But apart from that, brilliant to watch, John. And you're right about the, the five-point gap thing as well, ahead of Rangers. Um, it was only a few months ago, John, that we were eight points behind Rangers with only a handful of games to go, you've got to remember. So, yeah, that's how you, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, it's very early in the season. We're five points clear. We're flying just now. Anything can happen later on in the season, John, as you say. But uh, it, you're right to bring that up, John. It was only, what, when was it? April, sorry, John, we were eight points behind them. Um, with only a handful of games to go, and we still managed to turn it, turn it around. So, as you, you say, John, any, absolutely anything can happen in the league. There's only four games into the season, isn't it? Aye, it's only four games in. No, nobody, nobody's getting carried away. All we're, saying, we're seeing a better Celtic this season, I think, than we did last season. Brendan Rodgers was just in the door, and we had a lot of people giving Brendan a hard time. But he's just in the door. He's trying to work out the players. He's trying to work out a system. Eventually, by the time the end of the season came, Brendan had Celtic flying. We did say that uh, way back in December. If we win all our games up until the, the winter break, Celtic were going to win the league. And they did do that. Brendan had the team flying. And this the start of this season, they're flying even higher. It's, uh, I can't see any team stopping Celtic this season. Any team. I think Celtic will be a comfortable league winners this season by... 25 points, something like that. Yeah, and just wait till the new boys get settled in as well. So we've got that to look forward to as well. So anyway, John, um, that wraps it up then. 3-0 to Celtic. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely dominant. Men against boys. What else can you, what other quotes can you say about this game, John? Um, just lovely to watch. We've got to go through our individual 1-10s. to This will be interesting. Individual player scoring 1-10, to John. On you go, buddy. What do you think? Casper Schmeichel, uh, perfect performance, give him a nine. Mm-hmm. Liam Scales, nine and a half. Yep. Carter right. Vickers, nine. Mm-hmm. Alistair Johnson, nine. Greg yep. Taylor, eight. Senator of the Park, Rio Hitati, six. Cal McGregor, nine. Paul Bernardo, eight and a half. I thought he was not, in fact, an eight because he never lasted that long, did he? He came off quite early in the second half, so an eight for Paulo. Yeah. Um, uh, who else? Maeda, eight for Maeda, nine for Kyogo, and Nicholas Kuhn gets an eight. Uh, a couple of interesting ones in there, John, um, especially the Hitati one. I thought Hitati was better than a six. Um, but I'll run through mine, right? Tell us what you think. So, Casper, yeah. Eight and a half. Uh, Carter Vickers, nine. Scales, nine. Taylor, eight. Johnston, nine. McGregor, nine and a half. Uh, Hatati, seven and a half. Uh, Bernardo, seven and a half. As you say, Johnny came off in the 62nd minute, didn't he? Uh, Maeda, eight. Kyogo, nine. And Kuhn, seven and a half. What do you think? I'm thinking Hatati's no worth seven and a half. I thought he was pretty poor yesterday, Xander. 
I know he had a couple of decent wee flashes, but uh, I think he was getting caught on the ball a lot and all that stuff. Like, and you know, in my opinion, of Hattati, I think he's the best player in Scotland by a country mile, technically. I mean, I think he's an outstanding talent. I just think yesterday, I just think he was off it a wee bit. He wasn't at his best. That's why I just gave him the six. But uh, I, Paul Bernardo, I thought was absolutely outstanding yesterday. A uh, couple, of, uh, as you heard in my point markings, there was a few outstanding players in that performance. It was flawless, really. Uh, I, but I, if you want to give Hattati seven and a half, that's fair enough. He's a world class player, I think. Me personally, I just thought it was off the boil yesterday. Who's your man of the match, Sander? Aye, well, John, um, it was all right. It wasn't the best player in the party, as you say, John, but yeah, um, just as you say, a lot of high scores there for both of us, weren't there, for each player. Man of the match, John, I'm going to scales. I'm going to big scales. I know he wasn't a striker and banging the ball for 30 yards, etc., John, but seeing defence, big scales, what he was mopping up in that defence yesterday, John. Me personally, I thought he was man of the match, outstanding, and he's. Uh, <laughs> I'm just so happy to have Scales and at Celtic John and at centre half because, uh, most I'll say most games he's flawless, John, flawless. He mops up absolutely everything, and I think these forward players are sort of a, uh, you know, they're asking now asking, but what is it we're up against here? Because big Scales wins ninety nine percent of the battles, I would say. Definitely, definitely, 100% agree with you. Um, my man of the match was a very, very close one yesterday between Liam Scales, Callum McGregor and Kyogo. But I'm, I'm going to agree with you, Sander. I thought Liam Scales yesterday was an absolute colossus. He won everything in there. He was flying into tackles. He was taking the ball out for a walk and finding his target every time he passes. Liam Scales, I kind of look beyond that. And I heard that all sorts of different man of the matches when I was reading comments and all that on videos. And not one of them, not one Celtic fan mentioned this boy, Liam Scales. And I cannot believe they overlooked his defences, defensive performance yesterday. It was a colossus. He was absolutely outstanding and a thoroughly, thoroughly deserved man of the match. Close between him and Callum McGregor. I could have gave it to him or Kyogo, but for me, it's the big man, Liam Skills, the big red boy, the big redhead. Yeah, ginger god. Absolutely stunning defender. What a player we've got in our books again. Um, so, uh, yeah, we agree, John. That's the first time that's probably ever happened that we agree on the man of the match, but uh, I think most people are looking at is you know the score like the domination, the chances you've got to give it to a forward player, but you don't you don't have to give it to a forward player. You give it to the best player on the park. That's the way I look at it, and I'm sure that's the way you look at it as well, John. Um, I'll be quick touch on the new boys that came on, John. Let's, we've already mentioned that, but you know we didn't get much time. You know um, either of the boys. I don't think. I think your your eleven million pound man got eleven minutes, didn't he? Uh, but that was that was about uh, eleven minutes for um, Engels, and then McCowan. Is it McGowan or McCowan, John? I think it's McCowan, isn't it? Ah, it's McCowan. We are see, yeah. Right. Okay. No, that... Engels. Engels got longer than eleven minutes. So that he had a bit. No, no, he came on the, uh, half an hour to go, John. But uh, the game was finished. We then went at half an hour to go. So, yeah. No, um, it was McCowan, John. He, he came on fifteen minutes to go. I was arguing with my grandson. I have kept saying it was McGowan. He said it was McGowan, so the wee man was right. <laughs> Hi, uh, McGowan. Yeah. What did you think? Yeah, both the lads that came on, the new boys, obviously you can't look too much into maybe half an hour or 15 minutes, John, but what, did, what was your initial thoughts? I couldn't work out where where he was playing. Engels, like I said earlier, I couldn't work out what player he was on the park. Um, But so I can't really comment on him, but he never did anything outstanding when I heard his name getting called. I know he, he got yellow carded, that's, that's all I know. But the boy, uh, uh, Luke McCowan, I thought I thought he performed pretty well. He was getting stuck in. I could tell him a mile away with his uh, blonde hair. So yeah, I think he's going to be a, a player for Celtic. Xander Luke McCowan, I've got I've get a wee feeling about that, that out of all the players we signed, he's going to be the one that stands out. Yeah, yeah, he looks decent in the boy, didn't he? I think Engels will be the same, John. It's uh, 
He looked a wee bit, when he was looking at the, around the stadium at the end, he, he was a wee bit taken aback. And he goes, well, he, he couldn't believe what he was hearing and seeing, if I'm going to be honest with you. So um, he, he was just taken a wee bit aback with the full situation. I think, on the other hand, McCowan, he, he was, as you say, straight into it. Flying tackles, winning tackles, decent player as well. If we can find a forward pass, yeah, John, that was just 15 minutes. So that boy looks decent as well. So, yeah, yeah, things are looking good on the new side in front. And obviously, there are two boys that didn't get on the park. So um, we need to wait to after the international break before we see the, the rest of the new lads. Right, right. John. Anything else you want to add before we move on? No, no, I was just going to say, Engels, it's it's a hard game to bring somebody on, you know, uh, in a derby match. Once he warms up, I think we'll see the best out of him once once he starts, you know, getting used to the Scottish game. Obviously, Luke McCowan, he knows the Scottish game inside out, so he knows. So, I it was ideally set up for him to come on as a substitute, I think, Celtic fan as well. Um, all account seems a nice boy as well, doesn't he? Nice, well spoken and all that. Um, yeah. so I, I think, I think we're going to see uh, a decent sign in there with Luke McCowan and Engels as well. Yeah, that's it, John. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good, as the song says, John. Um, all right, let's wrap that up. That's the game finished, John. There's a few wee things we have to go through as well. By the way, we'll leave the comments this week as well because because I've been putting the the podcast on as a premiere. There's no many comments, but the, the comments will return on the next podcast. I promise you, folks, uh, just listen out for that on the next podcast. Hit your notification bell for the next podcast as well. We'll, we'll send you a notification when the next podcast. Right, John, I want to run through some results over the weekend, right? And a lot of people don't know this because we were in cloud nine and Sunday, but nobody knows what else was going on over the weekend. So I like to do this when we play Rangers, um, just a wee update for everybody on some scores, right, John? And interrupt me any time, John, you want to, if you want to talk about any of this. Uh, Dundee 2, St Mirren 2, St Johnston 1, Motherwell 2, Ross County 0, Aberdeen 1, puts them joint top with Celtic. Celtic 3, Rangers 0, Hearts 0, Dundee United 1, and Kamarok 1, Hibs 1, John. Anything sticks out there for you? Nothing. Dundee United winning at Tynecastle, that's all I care about. Um, obviously, Aberdeen continuing their unbeaten run to, at the start of the season. But uh, for me, Dundee United at Tynecastle, I watched that game. thought the Arabs were, uh, they were really good. Rangers have got to play them next, of course, and Celtic's got to play Hearts next. Yeah. Um, so that game had, had a wee bit of interest in that one to see how the two teams were performing. Hearts, Hearts have been really poor this season. I think Stephen Naismith, he's no long away for getting the sack, thankfully. Um, and the Arabs, obviously my second team, I like Dundee United, as you know. I thought they were outstanding yesterday. And uh, we'll keep an eye on them against uh, Rangers shortly. By the way, talking about comments, he says you're not doing the comments. There is one comment. I was reading the comments in midweek, and I think the guy deleted it, but I remember his name, so I'm going to name and shame him. Uh, and he comes onto the channel sometimes every now and again. Pat Santos, his name is. I don't know if you've seen the comment. No, no, did you see John? And you got. He was saying Brendan Rogers is absolutely hopeless, and Callum McGregor is finished. No, it was a comment along those lines, and I'm thinking, how can you say that? Brendan Rogers has got Celtic flying. No, I, I only imagine Pat. If you're listening, you're one of these guys that expects Celtic to do really well in Europe. He was going on about how he backstabs Celtic and he's a rat and all that stuff. And I don't I'm surprised you've never seen that comment. And Callum McGregor's finished. He's useless. He's he's near use. We need better and all that in the centre of the part. He's finished. I just my jaw just dropped when I seen that comment that some Celtic fans still think that way, Xander, about Brendan and uh even to go on about Callum McGregor like that, I was gobsmacked by that comment. Uh, you've got to wonder what's going through some people's minds. And also, this is just one person, John, right? This is obviously not the thoughts of any, if any, Celtic supporters, if I'm going to be honest. So, Pat, you're totally wrong. You, you couldn't be any more wrong, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I didn't see the comment, John. I didn't see it. So, as you say, you must have deleted it. Maybe he's had a wee drink or something. I don't know. But, John, Brendan Rogers, 99% of the Celtic fans are 
overjoyed with having Brendan back at the club. And Callum McGregor, one of the best captains we've ever had. I'm not going to say any more on the matter, John. Well, we just spoke about Callum McGregor. If we were to buy him right now, he would cost you in excess of £40 million. Pounds. If you were to buy a, a, buy a player like that. And for, to see a comment like that for somebody, to me, I'm not a Celtics fan because Callum McGregor is one of your best captains we've ever had. He's in there with the legends, Neil Lennon, Scott Brown, Billy McNeil. I'm not saying he's Lisbon line level, but he's a legend. The amount of appearances, the amount of trophies he's won, the amount of leagues he's led Celtic to. How can you say that about Callum McGregor? And look at the goals he scored this season as well. And for a guy to come on and say that about Cal Mack, I was gobsmacked, Xander, I yeah, think. John, there's something wrong there. That's I don't know if that's, you know, somebody at it or whatever, John. I don't know, but it just doesn't even make sense, does it? So, well, No, he's, he's, de he's definitely no at it because I've seen comments. He left that comment on Radio Clyde as well. If you go to why their videos, he left it on there as well. And he's left it on a few other videos. This guy does not like Carl McGregor and he's anti-Brendan Rodgers. So, uh, I don't know. I'm totally bemused by that. Um, any other Celtic fans listening to this think the same way? Do you think Brendan Rodgers is a dirty rat? Do you think he's uh, he's useless? And do you think Carl McGregor's useless? And shouldn't he be anywhere near Celtic? Let us know in the comments if you agree with Pat. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense, John. It doesn't even make sense. Um, all right, John. You brought up the other day, right? We'll, we'll park that there because it, it there's not even any point in going on anymore. But it's just it's just stupidity, really. Um, the international break, John. You said to me when we spoke after the game the, the other day, uh, saving Rangers again, right? You did say that, right? And I agree with you. Another two week break for them to organise things and get things. Uh, turned around for when they play the, the next game in the SPL or whatever, right? Um, but that's a few times this has happened, John, isn't it? They come back for the international break, then they start getting a wee run put together. So, yeah, the international break is sort of a helping Rangers. But I tell you who else is helping, John? Naismith uh, Hearts. I think if he had another league game to go, he was getting the sack. So the international break is saving Naismith at Hearts as well. And I tell you who else is saving Naismith the fact that they dropped into the conference league and to the conference league, sorry, as well. That's saving Naismith as well. Um, but what do you think of that, John? These international breaks, you know, Rangers a few times have been on their knees and they've had that like a two or three week layoff to help them out. Aye, uh, it's, it's bad, isn't it? Because when you look at what happened yesterday after the game, their fans are in revolt. Over at Ibrox outside the stadium, shouting sack the board, picking on the players, trying to fight with the players and all that stuff. I don't know if you've, if you've seen all the videos, but uh, their fans are in revolt against the club. And luckily for them, the international breaks come along and save saved their bacon. They can hide back under their beds for another couple of weeks or back in their boxes, as we would say. But okay. aye, and, and Naismith's the same. He gets two weeks to recoup and then turn up and play Celtic. Look, hopefully Celtic will put the final nail in his coffin, Naismith, and that'll yep. be him sacked after that. He'll not get sacked after getting beat with Celtic. I think they'll give Naismith another game after that. Uh, and if he loses that, then he'll be sacked. But I don't think he'll get sacked after the Celtic game. Mm, aye. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think they're sitting bottom in the league, if no bottom is second bottom in it. Uh, all right, John, that wraps your results up in the Premier League. Let's move on. Bruni Watch. We've got Bruni Watch. Remember, we always like to keep a wee eye on Scott Brown. Flying high at the top of the Scottish Championship, John. They were away to Dunfermline at the weekend. Um, away to the Pars. Uh, East End Park. I think they play at East End Park. And it finished one each, John. So that's the first points drop for Bruni in the league. But it's a tough away fixture at Dunfermline. Still a decent result there, John. One each. I won each still top of the league, so all good for uh, Bruni. I don't feel it's always a tough place to go for any team. They've got a nice wee stadium there, they've got uh, a good fan base. But, you know, Bruni's went away from home and picked up a point. He's still top of the league. And they're flying just now, so uh, aye. Aye, brilliant for Bruni. Yeah, keep up, Bruni. Keep, keep up the good work, son. 
and we'll see you get Celtic soon enough, pal. Um, Celtic reserves, John, uh, play in the, the Lowland League, don't they? So they played Trinette the other day. Celtic 6, Trinette 0. No. Decent result for the young lads, yeah? Aye, never seen that, but I will done the young guys. Uh, Trinette, that's the run about the Edinburgh kind of area, isn't it? Uh, Midlothian kind of area, Trinette. But I, I never even knew they had a, a football team. I said that to you before when you mentioned it. Um, but I, I well done the, the Celtic youngsters. Yeah, yeah, well done, well done. Nice, comfortable victory at home for Celtic reserves there in the Lowland League. So let's move on, John. This Champions League draw was made last week. Uh, so I kept a wee eye on some of the results for the, the teams we've got in the Champions League. Right? Just to keep a wee eye on them as well. Let's run through it quickly. Russia Dortmund no, Werner Bremen no, Aston Villa two, Leicester one, Leipzig three, Bayer Leverkusen two. That's a really decent result for Leipzig. Inter Milan four, Atalanta no, Young Boys of Bern finished one each with Lausanne, and then Dynamo Zagreb John they also drew one each with Rijeka. So there's your results for. The teams we've got in the Champions League getting stand out there for you, John. Aye, uh, Leipzig result, I suppose, beating Leverkusen. Yeah. That's that's never an easy thing, is it? No, 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 never easy, especially Leverkusen flying in Germany, ain't they? Uh, I think we friend Pong still at Leverkusen, he's not been sold yet either. So that looks as though that deal is not going to get done until uh, January, so we didn't get the extra millions for that, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that was a good result for Leipzig, John. Atalanta getting beat for nothing with Inter. That was a bit of a shock for me, that because Atalanta are flying just now. Um, but Inter Milan at home is always a tough place to go. San Siro, uh, decent result for Inter. Uh, we just hope that Atalanta um, keep up these poor performances, John, until they play us and then they crumble at Celtic Park. <laughs> Aye. Well, I don't think any of these teams, the way Celtic are playing, if they keep that up, I don't think any of these teams are uh, they're going to uh, have an easy time at Celtic Park. Mm. Uh, we can only hope our new players settle in in time. I'm looking forward to seeing more of Engels and uh, Trusty and defence. I, I think going to think. I think he's going to find it hard getting into that defence. Yeah, he's going to struggle. Yeah, John, you're right. But I. Ah, yes, he's going to struggle to get in there. The William Scales and Carter Vickers, they've built up are just an outstanding partnership. They have they conceded a goal this season either, apart from the, the League Cup game against Hibs. Yeah. But I, I think uh, Trusty's going to struggle to, to get into the, the centre-half position. I think Scales and Vickers is going to keep him on the bench. He might make appearances in Cup games or something like that, Xander. We'll wait and see. But barring any injuries to Scales or Vickers, you don't want that to happen anyway. I think that's the only way Trusty's going to get into that uh, centre-back position. Yeah, that's that, John. Again, yet again, I agree with you. That's, uh, Trusty's going to struggle to get in there. And I also think uh, your left-back's going to struggle as well. So, Because uh, Greg Taylor was, uh, wasn't he outstanding on Sunday, but he's he done a solid enough job, Greg Taylor. Um, he's, he's playing well, Greg. He really is. Um uh, the only one that stood out for me there was Aston Villa, obviously, um, beating Leicester 2-1 there, John. So we know how tough it's going to be going down to Villa. Um, so it looks as though they're on form as well, winning it in the English Premier League. Aye. Uh, it's going to, I say that uh, that would be the toughest game. It's uh, Villa away from home. I, th- I say that when we got the draw, that would be the toughest game. So I... Um... Like, I'm, I'm not interested in the Champions League, but I know we need to play these games. And there's more money and wins in the Champions League. So we can only hope and pray that Celtic get a few wins. What I'll take right now is just winning all our games at Celtic Park. I'll take that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just happy to see Celtic playing at Celtic Park and winning the games. Look, we're never going to win the Champions League. So, I taking a few wins at Celtic Park, I'd be happy with that, Xander. That would make my... Champions League nights are uh, that bit happier, just winning at Celtic Park. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And it's not long to wait, John, either. It's not long to wait because the Champions League kicks off uh, very very soon. Let's quickly run through our next up and coming fixtures, John. Let's have a wee look at that. 14th of September, obviously, we're at home to Hearts. 
so uh, home game in the league. John, um, we had this back-to-back away games, didn't we? Rangers had the back-to-back home games. We have now got three home games in the trot, but that's all down to the, the Cups as well, John. So Hearts in the Cup, sorry, Hearts in the League at home on the 14th of September. We've got Bratislava in the Champions League at home on the 19th. That's on a Wednesday, and it's interested instead of the Tuesday. Um, then we play Falkirk in the League Cup in the quarterfinal at home also. So three home games in the trot there, John, the 22nd. That's on a Sunday. Um, and then the fourth game is uh, we're away to St Johnson in the league at the end of the month. So uh, three home games in a row there, John. That's a pity it's no three league games in a row, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's all about the, you know me, it's all about the league for me. Um, Celtic, of course, have overtook Rangers in the... Uh, I know we're, I'm kind of digressing a wee bit here, but Celtic have overtook Rangers in uh, the fixtures. Rangers were ahead of Celtic. As you know, Rangers had won more derby matches than Celtic. Uh, and now Celtic have won more derby matches than them. Than them. Just one game in it, Xander. But Celtic yeah. uh, have won more derby matches than them now. And uh, we're looking at 55, but titles, I mean. But I, I touching on the, the home games, I think the Hearts game, I think that'll be a bit of a formality, although Hearts came to Celtic Park and beat us last season. I don't think that's going to happen this season. Yeah, different team. Uh, different, different team. team. Yeah. Um, so that, I think that's a bit of a formality. I think Celtic will take a few off of them at Celtic Park. Uh, who is it in the Champions League? Champions League, we've got uh, Bratislava, John, on the 19th of Wednesday night. I ah, fancy a Celtic one there, but you don't know where the Champions League because I don't know much about the team, but Bratislava, I know the team, of course, but ah, I fancy a Celtic one there. And Falkirk, John McGlynn, always got his teams playing well, but Celtic far too strong for them. I think that's a good chance for one of the, or a couple of the new boys to step in and make their debut as starters, Zander. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Valley and the other boy at the centre back uh, might get a wee chance in, in the Falkirk Cup game. Yeah, I totally agree with that, John. Okay, one more feature, new feature, John, before we go. It's the biggest win of the week. So here we go. The biggest win of the week goes to and it's a it's a it's an actual prize for Rangers, John. Rangers won the biggest result of the week. They beat Dundee United Ladies 10-0. And the women's SPFL there, John. So congratulations. <laughs> 10, 10 0 to Rangers. Um and the only picked it by a last minute goal, John, because there was another nine nothing win there. So um for one of the other teams. So Rangers won the biggest win of the week. Dungeon United must be some outfit, John. Aye. I don't watch the women's game. Uh, I watch just the Celtic women's game. If it's on, I'll maybe watch it if I remember, but I don't watch it, really. Um, I, I was going to say well done, but who cares? I mean, <laughs> uh, You've got to have some joy to hold on to, John. <laughs> I, well, the joy last week when they beat the, the Diddy team, Ross County 6-0, that was the moral victory for them. It was yeah. not a moral victory, it was a victory, but it was... Uh, the moral league one. <laughs> I yeah, don't know what you it. call it. That was the moral victory going into the Glasgow Derby, wasn't it, as you say? So, uh, yeah, as you say, no moral victory. It was a victory, but uh, it meant nothing in the end because um, it didn't do them any good. They got humbled at Paradise. Uh, before we call it a day, John, one more wee result for you. Celtic ladies now, Hibs now, so the ladies drop their first two points of the season. Uh, it's a clanger, isn't it, getting the... Uh... A draw with Hibs. Uh, Hibs put on a big fight last game of the season. It's been the Celtic ladies won the league. They had to play Hibs at Celtic Park. And I watched that game and they fought a blood and thunder to stop Celtic winning that league. You know me, don't like Hibs. But there you go. Hibs have stopped Celtic this time. Stopped them getting a wee win there. So Celtic ladies say, I need to get their act together quick if they're going yeah. to win this, this league again. That's it, John. You can't um, can't go dropping points to teams like Hibs, the ladies. That is no, dis- no disrespect to them, but that's the games you have to win if you want to make it two in a row for the Celtic ladies. Anyway, don't I end it on a low note? We want to end it on a high note, John. Congratulations to the boys, the hoops, the champions. Well done, 
to the, the lads, you know, made us all very proud, didn't they, John? With a performance and a display like that. Um, flawless, totally flawless. 3 nothing, going on 7 8 nothing. Uh, makes us all very happy, John, and uh, going into the international break on a high. Well, this is it. And we get into that break on a high, Carl McGregor's no playing for Scotland anymore, which is good. That'll be him well rested for a couple of weeks. And like you say, Celtic absolutely humbled them. It could have been anything Celtic wanted it to be. And uh, myself and every other Celtic fan, apart from Pat Santos, is over the moon today. Yeah, apart from Pat Santos. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're all in cloud nine. Everybody could go to their work the day. Big smiles on their faces, John. Uh, just absolutely brilliant, John. Can't wait to the Hearts game as well. That's on the next game up for the Champions is Hearts at Celtic Park. All right, John. We'll wrap that up there unless there's anything else you want to add before we split. Uh, there's no anything I want to add, but I want to just give a shout out to the people that left comments. I'm not going to read their comments, but just a shout out to them. We would never sell our club. Rosemary, you, Deef, Paul McEwen, uh, Teresa Shone, Shoney, is that? Teresa Shoney? Um, not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, Roseanne, hello, Roseanne, who predicted 3 1, the same as myself. Yeah. Um, Paul McEwen, of course, James Doran, of course, one of our brilliant regulars. Yeah. Uh, P- Paul McComb, Mad About Football, and Rowan Stone. So, a big shout out to all the boys and girls who left a comment on YouTube. Yeah, thanks very much, folks. And the, the comments will return in the next video, I promise you that. We just we've run out of time. Um, we'll, we'll bring them up on the next podcast. And thank you, everybody, for viewing and listening as well. Thank you to everybody that entered the competition. Get your notification bell on for the next competition, folks. You'll get a wee notification when that's up on YouTube. Um, congratulations to the competition winners, Michael and Raymond. Well done. And I'd like to finish on a wee joke. Doctor, doctor, I think I'm a tub of butter. Spread yourself on the couch. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> very, very poor. Who was he talking to in the river? <laughs> <laughs> really, I love it.